This is what they do now, and I see if they won't break home. So, first day for house. You know, go work. No you money. Get money. No you money. You stay for house. And they tell us to stay for house for the past two weeks now. For the two weeks, how will I make it? Generally, the compliance level has been quite encouraging. Um, not just in the federal capital territory, but also in the other two states uh, where there is a complete cessation of movement. And I'm talking about Lagos State as well as Ogun State. And even across the other parts of the country where there are partial lockdown, the compliance levels have also been very encouraging. And naturally, you will expect that there will be a few deviants but that's expected of human nature and human beings. And, uh, but, but we are dealing with those um, exceptions to the rule um, with um, the enforcement tools at our disposal. Generally, our, our desire is for citizens to actually engage in voluntary compliance. We, we will be happier if our citizens on their own obey these restriction orders without the police resorting to call law enforcement approaches and extracting or compelling obedience to these restriction orders. And that's why we are engaging in massive sensitization and uh, trying to take the campaign to the grassroots, of course, working with other relevant agencies to, to, to ensure that our citizens are able to understand the rationale behind this restriction of movement, uh, the rationale behind the, the need for them to maintain social distance, and then voluntarily and willingly keen into some of these policies. The truth remains that when you are dealing with an organization as big as the Nigerian police force or you're also dealing with other um, components of the policing community, uh, and I'm talking of other security agencies who are also involved in the enforcement of this lockdown, um, you will certainly get some pockets of police officers. You may get one or two occasions or instances where these police officers fall short of the expectations of the public, fall short of their callings as police officers. But again, that's why we've got leadership. Um, the position of the IGP uh, is very clear. He expects that police officers who are deployed on, on this very special assignment must, as a matter of policy, conduct themselves in manners consistent with the rules and regulations uh, guiding their conduct in similar operations. In this particular assignment, the police, um, the police have got a, a standard operating procedure that has been uh, clearly set out. And this SOP is designed to actually guide the conduct of our men who are on the field enforcing uh, the restriction orders and the, 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 our position is that if any police officer conduct himself or herself in a manner inconsistent um, with any of these extant rules and regulation guiding this operation or conduct themselves in manners clearly in breach of the, the, the standard operating procedure such police officer or officers uh, will be brought to book. And that's exactly what we're doing. Beyond that, we are also um, upping up our game in, in, in the areas of very close supervision and monitoring of our men who are deployed on the field. And so what, we have, what we've done is to come up with a, 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 diff, a chain of commands and a chain of supervision so that why we are deploying these men um, to the field to actually monitor our citizens and enforce these restriction orders. We are also sending other um, 
police officers who are also meant to police the policemen themselves who are policing the citizens. The, the truth again is that man is created to be free. By the very nature of mankind, he is created, um, he's created to be free. And therefore, any time the government put out any regulation that restrict this freedom, the liberty of man or the liberty of man, naturally, you see some level of resistance. Restriction of movement, cessation of movement, lockdown of any kind, these are all antithetical to the very essence of the liberty that humankind cherish so much. So we expect that there will be build up of tensions, there will be build up of emotions, there will be build up of stress arising from this lockdown. But also, we believe that if the rationale, the reasons for this lockdown, for this restriction of movement are properly explained to the citizens, they will naturally uh, be ready to undergo these very short inconveniences in order to stay alive. And so, our appeal to our citizens is to understand that the, the whole precautionary measures of lockdown, restrictions, and cessation of movement are designed to protect lives and property. I mean, they are designed to protect the lives of our citizens. They are designed to limit the spread um, of this very um, dangerous virus. They are designed to protect our community. They are, they, are, they are for our own good. And we want to appeal to them to go along with us, walk this journey, no matter how inconveniences, no matter how inconveniencing it might be, no matter how hard and torturous it might appear, it is just for a short while. And very soon, we'll be out of this, and we'll be back to our normal life. We'll be able to party again. We'll be able to go to church again. We'll be able to go to mosque again. We'll be able to play our football again. We'll be able to go to our market again. We'll be able to meet and uh, do all the things that we are currently uh, missing. And so, it is just a short while, and I want to appeal very strongly that we all walk this short journey and then come out victorious at the end of the day. I don't, I don't think so. The, the, the IGP's directives are clear. The, the, IGP, we, the police is not um, uh, policing and police officers are not sitting back at home. We're still on our offices, and that's why you can come to me and meet me at work and speak to me. We are still on the streets, patrolling the streets. We are still at the airport. We are still at the railway stations. We are still at the motor parks. We are still uh, keeping vigil over the banks. We are still, we're still performing our fundamental and statutory uh, functions. So. The fact that we are de-emphasizing uh, the arrest uh, of suspects who are involved in petty crimes uh, does not amount to an abdication of our fundamental rules of keeping Nigeria safe and keeping our public secure. So the, the only thing we're trying to do again is to keep away from those acts, actions uh, that could further provide a breeding ground for the spread of this infectious, um, for this very infectious uh, and somewhat contagious virus. Mm -hmm.